Spa Francorchamps is the venue for the first round of the Renault Sport Trophy RS01, the brand new championship launched by Renault Sport Technologies. It takes place at six meetings as part of the World Series by Renault. 13 RS01 are at the start line of the first event, lining up in the colours of six different teams. Throughout the course of the season, you'll learn everything about the teams entered into the Renault Sport Trophy. We'll take you behind the scenes and live the races with the teams. Hi, welcome everyone. We're here in Spa Francorchamps for the first round of the Renault Sport Trophy. This weekend, you're welcome with us in the V8 racing team. Let's go. In developing the RS01 and launching the Renault Sport Trophy, Renault has once again demonstrated its attachment to high-level competition. Patrice Rati, the Director General of Renault Sport Technology, talks us through the new series strong points. We wanted to make a high-performance car using all the technology from the Renault formula and the single-seaters. The shell is made from carbon, the suspension is top-notch and the design is that of a concept car. Here we've used all the savoir-faire of Renault Sport, optimizing its value for money. This car costs a lot less than a GT3, for example, while being much more powerful. The new Renault Sport Trophy Championship is very original because we have three races every weekend. An endurance race where the two drivers hand the wheel over to each other, then a sprint race for each of the two drivers where they'll be up against drivers of a similar level. In the field, about a third of the drivers come from single-seaters, whether it's a Formula Renault, Formula 3 or other categories, and two-thirds of the drivers have done GT or touring cars in general. Others have come over from the GAN Trophy. We've just started, this is the first race of the weekend, and over the course of the season I think more drivers will be interested in seeing how things develop and will want to test the car. The first tryouts, which we've done, make us very confident for the future. Hello, my name is Francesco Pastorelli, team manager of V8 Racing. Uh, we welcome you, we will make a small round to the team and let's see who is where. So they are now preparing the cars for the first race. First race of the season, the long race. So this is the car from Max Brahms and Roy Geertz. They're both here. This is our second car. It's from Nicky Pastorelli and Dieter Excitov. And then we got our 45, the third car. It's for the Italian, uh, Federico Leo and Stefano Constantini. We're a team based in Holland. Uh, we're new to the series. We never raced before in the World Series weekends, but we like, really like it. There's a maximum of 11 people, as allowed is. So we, that's what we're using now for the maximum uh, amount of people that we have. This is uh, two of our mechanics. He's the head uh, chief mechanic. That's Renato. He's Italian, so we have a lot of uh, uh, nationalities. This is Mark, he's from Holland. Then we are behind the pit walling system. We have the place from the engineers where they can follow the complete race. We have two engineers for three cars, so they're working all together with them. So then on the car number five, it's, uh, it's my brother, so <laughs> it's family. It's nice to have uh, my brother as a team manager, uh, apart from the fact he's doing a great job, but you know, the, the, it's nice to work together with him. And um, yeah, the team, I'm, I can just say I'm really proud of the team because we started uh, a couple of years ago from zero. We all together created this uh, great atmosphere, uh, doing a great job. The boss of the team uh, wants really to win, to win what he, he does. I feel good. And now we have to try to do always the best. I decided to drive it to VA's racing for this year uh, because yeah, the team is well organized, uh, looking good. Also uh, under the drivers, the relationship, the friendship, it's, uh, it's really cool. And uh, uh, yeah, we have, we have a really strong team, I believe. 
Football season long, you'll uncover the secrets of the RS01. To explain everything to you will be an engineer from Renault Sport Technologies and a Formula One driver. We'll start with Julien Jeanne and Max Verstappen, who will talk us through the aerodynamics, the braking system and the clutch. So here we go. I mean, it's great to just drive away without using the clutch. The car's not equipped with clutch control, but there is a clutch in the car. It's uh, centrifugal and you don't need controls to command it. It has multiple advantages, mainly for reducing costs, but also to prevent false moves and the clutch overheating. Now we go up to, to Rouge, one of the most challenging corners uh, of the world. And again here you feel a lot of grip before you go up. And here the car gets really light, but it's just a great feeling to go up here. Yeah. We wanted the car to be high level when it comes to aerodynamics. The aim is to have a high performing car that is stable through large corners. On a circuit like Spa with Eau Rouge especially, stability is imperative in order to get through the corner quickly. Drivers come out of Eau Rouge at 250 kilometers an hour. The rear wing is adjustable so that teams can work on the setup and the aerodynamic balance. And the flat bottom has been designed in a specific way so that the aerodynamics remain consistent no matter how the car moves. Here, great top speed of the car. And here you break at 100 meters and very impressive braking again. It just feels like a Formula car through the corners. The car has remarkable braking power. The deceleration can go up to 3G, which is huge for this type of car. All that is thanks to carbon brakes and the ABS system developed specifically for this car. There are four identical carbon discs, front and back, in order to reduce the costs for the season. The discs are designed for endurance and races that last several hours, but also for quite incredible deceleration. The driver can set up the ABS to the requisite level for the rain or for the dry and can also modify the balance between front and rear braking. It can change from one driver to another, notably when they do stints in endurance races. At this first round of the season, 13 cars are on the starting grid. Even if it's a first for everybody, some already have assets to bring to the fore. That's the case for the ART Junior team, already highly reputed in single-seaters. They've entered two cars here, including a duo composed of Andrea Pizzitola, who worked with them for two seasons in Formula Renault, and Richard Gonda in the prestige category. Well, we all know each other off by heart, so we work together in an effective way. And ART is the name. We must honour the team. It's doubly motivating for the team and for me. The win is our biggest target, for sure, for the whole season. If we have no mistakes, no troubles, uh, technical issues, I think we can attack the first place, for sure. The Monlau competition team, Sarah Bovi and Wolfgang Reip are competing on home soil. They stand a real chance on this Arden toboggan run, a track they know really well. I know the track, but with this car I have no reference points. All the braking points are later and the speeds are different, so I needed to relearn the circuit. The experience I had here was in GT3, and my best time was 2.19. This morning I did a 2.13. That's a big difference. One of the teams that is to be reckoned with is Team Oregon. They've got three RS01s here. The Italian team has some serious cards to play. One of their teams is composed of Nicolo Nalio and Luciano Pacetta. Uh, we've got a, a three-car team with three very good, uh, strong cars. It's a team sport, but it's also an individual sport as well, so it combines the best of both. It's interesting for us to do an endurance race. We can do well during the season. And also we can push a lot for our sprint race for my championship to get the, the final prize. It's very, very interesting for us. 
It looks like being quite a battle all season long, and that's even more understandable given the prizes on offer to the winners in each category, starting with the elite. In the top category, we've got a deal with our allies at Nissan, and they'll get the winner testing a Japanese Super GT. It could lead to a contract racing in Japan in Super GT. The other category has the chance to race in the 24 Hours of Le Mans in 2016 in an LMP2 or in a GT. It's a great prize. On Saturday morning, the serious stuff starts with the first qualifying session of the season. It's the prestige category and has the honour of kicking things off. In the V8 racing team, the atmosphere is pretty relaxed. No one is really nervous, but we're all excited. It's the first qualifying for the f in the first season, so this, uh, everything is new for everyone, so it's a big, big thing. The drivers have 20 minutes to post their best time, and the first to shine is Richard Gonda of the Art Junior team. He sets pole in 2.13.272. Behind him is Nicolo Nalio of the Oregon team. In the V8 racing team, the qualifying session goes off without a hitch. We're currently second in the qualifying with Max Brandt. It's going really well. Still two minutes to go, so it is uh, interesting. At the end of the session, Brahms is third, Sitchoff fourth, and Constantini seventh. In the elites, not everything is going well for the Dutch team. I have confidence. Uh, yesterday we've seen the pace was good, so we'll see how it is today. The track conditions are different, but uh, we will push as hard as we can. Yes, we waited a little bit because uh, we wanted to see what the other were doing and have free space on the on the track. So we will. S that's why we waited a bit longer to go out, and we will see now what happens. Still nine minutes left, so uh, we will see the last minutes where we are. The gamble doesn't pay off. None of the drivers manage to do a flying lap, and they end up being eighth, eleventh, and twelfth on the elite starting grid. The pole position goes to the Verschu and Stein Schultorst in front of Andrea Pizzitola and David Fuminelli. Saturday at the end of the afternoon and the pressure rises a notch. It's only a few minutes before the start of the endurance race and the prestige drivers are going to take the start. The target is to be number one, of course. But uh, let's see how it goes. First time, first race, so uh, finish. That's the most important thing. Have to keep the car in one piece, the first thing, and then we will see where we end. This is a long race, so everything can happen. Respectively third and fourth on the grid, the number four and five cars have a card to play off the start. Up front, the battle is joined immediately between Nicolo and Richard. Diedrich Sitchoff is fighting for a podium finish. Now the V8 racing driver is overtaken by Dario Capitano on the first lap. to come up to speed but he's getting uh, not so far off from the leaders right now so if he can stay consistent like that uh, we can have a good finish the first part of the race was not that spectacular but we're still running 4, 5th and 6th, so top 6 all 3 cars. It's not that bad for the first race. At the moment, the window opens for the driver changes. Richard Gonda has reclaimed the lead, but a problem in the pits means they can't hold their advantage. The two Oregon cars fill the top two places, and we are on board with Luciana Bacetta. Well, 
Well, they were on course for a top five. Bad luck strikes the V8 racing team. That of Nicky Pastorelli and Diedrich Sitchoff, as well as Roy Gertz and Max Brahms. Probably maybe catch some debris from an earlier crash on the clearways or whatever. We lost some places, but still the other cars are four and fifth, so we have a good chance with them. He's fighting for position. For tomorrow, uh, I think we need to uh, to do some light work to see what uh, what actually is going on with the tires. Maybe it's just only a curb so and it's it's no problem. But on the other hand, uh, uh, if it is the setup, we need to work out for tomorrow. Constantini and Leo hit problems and come back into the pits before the chequered flag. After the first 70 minutes of the race, the number three RS01 of Donche and Frohn were fifth behind Wolfgang Reip and Sarah Bovi. The podium was composed of Pizzitola Gonda, third behind Bacetta Nalio and Fuminelli Capitano, who scored their first win of the year. After problems the previous day, the V8 racing team want to get onto the podium in order to stay in the title race. We hope we found something on the car which gave us the uh, uh, flat tyres. But we will see in the race now, it's still a short race but, and everything can happen. Victory will be hard but Bobby uh, will we fight for it. I push hard in the first part of the race and I hope that I take a podium. The first event of the day, the prestige sprint race, lasts 20 minutes plus one lap. Max Brahms and Diedrich Seitschoff start on the second row. The start is far less disciplined than in the endurance race. There are fights and collisions. Stefano Constantini hits his teammate Max Brahms and that sows disorder in the peloton. Several cars are forced to abandon. Diedrich Seitschoff and his RS01 number four profit from that to take over the lead and they're fighting it out with Tony Fawn for the win. We're still fighting for the podium place in P2 and P3. I uh, hope it can remain like this. The fast guys are out, it's a bit of um, luck on our side, but we were, there's still 20 minutes to go. Stefano Constantini is competing with Sarah Bovi for third, and the Belgian driver has the last word. Front, it's not over yet. Sajov fights to the end and lifts spirits in the V8 racing team.
great feeling. Winning the race is always good. It's the best feeling we can get now. Good team, a good job. Everything curved perfect. To close out this first round of the Renault Sport Trophy, the elite drivers set off for yeah, a sprint it was a race. race. From yesterday, we, put, we tried some different setups and uh, we see what works out and whatnot, and um, try to set up the car in a better position. A few minutes before the start, doubt sets in in the V8 racing team. The weather is uncertain. You have to choose the right tyres for the 20-minute race. If it stays like this, we have to go out on rain tyres, but uh, we still have more than half an hour until the start, so we wait until the last moment. So we never try the car on the wet. I don't know the car how is it. We try to adapt it to the car, to the driving, but I think it could be a good thing for us. The team goes for wet tyres for the three cars. V8 racing drivers are 8th, 10th and 11th on the grid. Leo is the best placed. Rain sets in off the start for the final race of the weekend. There's a big fight into the first corner. of the first lap, the top three is as follows. Stein, Schutost, Andrea Pizzitola and Wolfgang Reip. Behind them, things are being shaken up. Ramos of Vesure hits the RS01 of David Fuminelli. The rain stops and the safety car comes out, it's a chance to preserve safety the tyres. Tires, but at the end, it's, uh, it's only 10, 10 minutes left now, so the race will be short, so we will finish the race on rain tyres. At the restart, Pizzitola, the Art Junior driver, gets things wrong and finds himself fourth. We're on board with Pizzitola and he doesn't let things lie and manages to reclaim third from Bacetta. Up front, Schottost and Reip have a solid hold on their positions all the way through to the chequered flag. Federico Leo puts in the best display for the V8 racing team. He's eighth in front of Gertz and Pastorelli who complete the top ten. We had some ups and downs. The first race of the Elite was okay, where we came, we won the race, so that was a good result. The last race was not what we were suspecting. We, yeah, we were not on the speed there. The victory is always good to have. And now we will see what we will have to change or what we should do for the next weekend, but uh, we will go uh, straight on. The Belgian round of the World Series by Renault is over. The first ever Renault Sport Trophy event lived up to all its promise with terrific battles in all three races over the weekend. The next round is in Hungary from June the 12th to June the 14th. <laughs>